Writing and making videos about money has allowed me to meet some amazing people in my life. And one of those amazing individuals is Dr. Jordan Grummet, aka Doc G, a hospice physician who's also the host of Earn and Invest podcast. He brings a very unique perspective into money discussions because of his role as a hospice physician. How money fits into our life when contrasted against the brutal reality of death. How we can use money and live a life to minimize regret when we're all on our deathbeds. Deep questions to which there are no simple answers to. So today, I'm excited to share with you 10 of my favorite lessons from his book, Taking Stock. A hospice doctor's advice on financial independence, building wealth, and living a regret-free life. And hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. My number one favorite takeaway from Doc G's Taking Stock. Conduct a life review, sooner than later. In Doc G's long career as a hospice physician, he had to deliver many terminal diagnoses. He had to sit down with the patient and the family and had to have these conversations over and over again. Many in some of the most agonizing circumstances. I can't even imagine what this must be like. However, after the initial shock died down, Doc Chi talks about the period of self-evaluation and introspection, a process which he calls life review. Life review is a holistic and structured process of evaluating one's past and present, including events and memories in an attempt to find meaning in and achieve resolution of one's life. Questions such as, what accomplishments am I proud of? Have I nurtured my relationships? What do I regret? And why do I regret them? And as you can guess, these questions can bring a lot of baggage and unresolved issues to the surface. And unfortunately for many people, they're only asking these deep questions in the face of a terminal illness, which most often is too late to do much about the many gaps and areas in which they feel they fell short. So let's not wait. Let's not wait until we receive life-changing news to conduct such an important activity. Let's find the courage to do a life review now, well before the end is within sight. The gift of mortality, however, becomes even more powerful in the hands of those who are not imminently facing death. There is no reason we can't use everyday loss and suffering to give us the courage to start asking questions about the identity and purpose today. My number two favorite takeaway from Doc G's Taking Stock. Practice the art of subtraction. In the line of life review and living the life that we want, one of the strategies to help us do that is to practice the art of subtraction. Michael Kahn is an American film editor who's worked on multiple successful films, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Schindler's List, Saving Private Ryan, and Lincoln. We oftentimes think that a movie is great because of what is shown. However, according to Michael Kahn, the movie is great because what is not shown, what is edited out of the movie, strict elimination of the trivial, unimportant, or irrelevant. A good editor practices the art of subtraction, allowing the most important aspect of the film to shine and highlight the core story. In the same way, Doc G emphasizes how we should practice the art of subtraction in our own personal lives to subtract parts of our lives we find unfulfilling and ungratifying. Take stock of all your obligations. Activities take a good chunk of your time. Then Doc G recommends you ask yourself this question. Does this activity add to my underlying sense of purpose, identity, and connection? If not, think how you can subtract this activity from your life. The more you do this, the more you'll be able to identify a few things that are of exceptional value, and you'll be able to give them the attention they deserve. If you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. A quick interruption before we move on. If you haven't yet downloaded your free copy of my 10-step guide to securing your family's financial future, I highly recommend you do so today. This resource lays out the simple steps you can take today to not only grow your net worth, but to protect your family as well. Additionally, when you download the guide, you'll also be joining my email newsletter. Newsletter where you can connect with me directly. I must be old school, but I have a hard time keeping up with all the comments on social media. So I found that email is one of the best ways I can connect with people. So if you'd like a copy of this free PDF, as well as join my email newsletter, please go to my website, financialtortoise.com. I'll also have a link in the description below. All right, with that said, let's get back to the video. My number three favorite takeaway from Doc G's Taking Stock. Understand that there are many paths to living, many paths to financial independence. Just like there are many different paths to get from Los Angeles to New York or Paris to Seoul, there are many different ways to achieve financial independence. Let me share with you a few that Doc G highlights in his book. One, the front load sacrifice. This is the traditional FIRE, financial independence retire early pathway. Find yourself a well-paying job early in your career. Save aggressively through a combination of high income, frugality, and geo-arbitrage. Invest all your savings into a simple broad market index fund and retire early. Real quick, for those of you hearing geo arbitrage for the first time, let me explain. The term sounds fancy, but the concept is super simple. It essentially is moving to a place with a lower cost of living while maintaining your income. For example, if you're a doctor that can command a half a million dollars in salary, 
Instead of living in New York City, where the cost of living is higher, you decide to move to Omaha, Nebraska, where not only are you able to maintain a high salary, but save a lot more because it's much cheaper to live in Omaha compared to New York City. Second path, passive income and side hustle. In this pathway, you create passive income and side hustle revenue enough to cover your daily needs. Instead of employing savings and compounding investments in the front load sacrifice, this technique is much more heavily based on either real estate or entrepreneurship. Third path, passion play. People who follow this path have no interest in grinding it out as described in the front load sacrifice pathway. Instead, they're looking to convert their passion into a full-time job. However, as you can guess, this is much harder than it sounds. And thus, according to Doc G, the most controversial pathway. It is in a way, totally redefining financial independence. Instead of focusing on net worth, this pathway's objective is to fill one's time primarily with meaningful activities, while also making enough money to survive. All right, but do we really need to pick just one path? What if we were to replace either or with both and? Which leads to my next favorite takeaway. My number four favorite takeaway from Doc G's Taking Stock, the dining room table. That's right, where we eat our breakfast, lunch, and dinner on. All right, let me explain this one a bit more. In the world of personal finance and investing, risk mitigation is one of the most important concepts. The risk of losing our source of income. The risk of our portfolio declining in value. The risk of a major unexpected event taking a big chunk out of our bank account. So how do we mitigate risk? By building a dining room financial plan table with four legs. When your financial plan is based on only one source of income, like a W-2 wage, you're like a flamingo, standing on one leg. And the big risk with this plan is that with one single blow, you can easily topple over. The two-legged plan is slightly better. You're adding investing, your 401k, Roth IRA, and brokerage investment account to your W-2 job. Now, if you're to take this concept up a notch, you get to the three-legged stool, adding real estate to your holding. Now your ability to withstand stress becomes much greater. But if you really want something sturdy, risk mitigated, you can build yourself a dining room table with four legs. You add in side hustle to your already multi-pronged approach. So you have leg one, W-2 income. Leg two, broad market index funds. Leg three, real estate exposure. And leg four, side hustle. Now, to build a dining room table is really a personal approach, but it is a good framework to assess your current financial situation. Do you feel uneasy having your whole financial plan be dependent upon a single W-2 income? If so, start adding some legs to your table. My number five favorite takeaway from Doc G's Taking Stock. Recognize the importance of having the talk. If you have elderly parents, talking to them about how they want to deal with their finances when they get older. If you're the elderly, talking to your adult children about how you want them to deal with your finances once you're not able to. And this is a hard one if you've never had to deal with it or even thought about it before. No one wants to think about dying. However, if you don't have this conversation with the people you love now, then when? When you're incapacitated? When they're mourning a physical or emotional loss? Or if you're the parent? When you're exhausted and unable to express your wishes to your adult children? Having my aging parents living with us for the past 10 years, this is something that I had thought a lot about. Is there something we can do now so when the time comes, we're not scrambling? So we aren't spending our precious time dealing with admin issues, things we could have dealt with earlier versus time with our loved ones? This is a hard topic to breach, so let me share with you a few tips. One, ask for advice. If your parents are anything like mine, I'm sure they love to give advice. So use this to your advantage. Parents are often reluctant to be open about money because they feel uncomfortable about the decisions they've made. However, if you approach the conversation with the posture of asking for help, they might be more open about their own financial situation. Two, use stories. Talk to them about the artist Prince and how when he died without a will or an estate plan, his siblings had to spend years in probate court fighting over his estate. This could spark the conversation about their financial desires at their death. Three, don't start the conversation with money. Instead, start the conversation with another topic that could achieve the same goal. For example, instead of asking your parents how much they have in their retirement account, ask them what their plans are once they retire. This could open up the door to their lifestyle affordability or even their thoughts about retirement. The key is to simply start the conversation and see where it goes from there. My number six favorite takeaway from Doc G's Taking Stock. In the line of recognizing the importance of having the talk, recognize the importance of having the legacy documents. Doc G lays out the following documents as must-haves. One, healthcare power of attorney. The healthcare power of attorney refers to both the document and the person whom your parent or yourself can identify to make medical decisions for them if they become incapacitated. Two, financial power of attorney. The financial power of attorney creates a trusted agent to act on behalf of your parents in financial matters. Three, living will. A living will is a legal written document that specifies what a person would or would not want to have medically done to keep them alive if they cannot speak for themselves. Four, poultice form. The physician orders for life-sustaining treatment form. 
This is an attempt to clarify and improve end-of-life care by encouraging providers, patients, and families to discuss critical illness and write a set of orders as a guidance during medical crisis. All right, my number seven favorite takeaway from Doc G's Taking Stock. Maximize the time we have on Earth. Although we may not know exactly how many seconds or minutes we have, we are apportioned a limited amount of time on this Earth from the day we're born to the day we die. Here are a few strategies that Doc G uses to maximize the limited time he has on Earth. One, rise early. He likes to wake up early and tackle the most difficult task first. Not only does he have the most amount of energy early in the morning, there also is no one else awake to distract him. Two, optimize. He likes to cancel all useless meetings in the workplace when he has the authority. And he also tries to cut down and eliminate unnecessary emails, as well as asking colleagues to text first before calling. Three, work bursting. Time management gurus like to call this tactic either time blocking or task batching. Regardless, this method encourages the practice of isolating similar tasks into groups so you can take advantage of highly focused, highly energetic spurts. Four, outsourcing. Doc Chi talks about how he values having his kid's nanny around despite the cost. The nanny helps run errands and open the door for the repair person when something goes wrong. Now, this is something that everyone can afford. However, from Doc G's perspective, because he values his time so much, it makes sense for him. Bottom line, Prioritize time and utilize techniques to create a sense of time abundance. My number eight favorite takeaway from Doc G's taking stock. Have the courage to fail. As a hospice physician, having spent so many hours with dying people, he's seen it all. And he has seen failing, or more correctly, not failing enough as a major regret of the dying. I seldom witness a person complaining on their deathbed that they tried their best and yet didn't succeed. We don't want to be at the end stages of our lives saying the following. I wish I had the courage to. I wish I had the strength to say, if only I was brave enough to try. So let's have the courage today to fail. If there's something that we wish to try, but always found an excuse to shy away from, let's find the courage to take the first step. To me, this YouTube channel was one of those projects that I constantly delayed because I was terrified of failure. Who was I to think in my middle age, I could create a YouTube channel? Couldn't I see that it was only the young and the hip that could succeed? What more value could I add to the internet? But deep down, I knew it was a fear of failure the fear of ridicule that held me back. And I knew I would regret never having tried than having tried and failed. So thank you to all of you who are watching this channel today. You have helped me overcome my fear and I will forever be grateful. We need to have the courage to invest in failing bravely without fear or remorse. My number nine favorite takeaway from Doc G is taking stock. Be careful not to chase false gods. Again, working with those who are close to death has made Doc G think a great deal about whom and what we choose to deify. What do we worship and why? And worse, regretting at the end of our life about surrounding ourselves with things we thought were important, but ultimately realizing that they were not. They were false gods. For many, money and career are at the top of the list. I have never, never heard anyone say they wish they worked harder at their job or accumulated more wealth as they lie on their deathbed. No one regretted that they should have spent more nights and weekends in the office. Most often, it's the opposite. Why did I work so hard? At the expense of spending time with our families or just enjoying life, living here and now. So let's be careful not to worship false gods. My number 10 favorite takeaway from Doc G's taking stock. Investing well can make us rich one day, but more importantly, investing prepares for the unexpected. We're dying from the day we're born. The when, where, and how remains a mystery. This is an indisputable fact. We're all going to die one day. How, when, and where, we will never know. So we must plan for that fact. And investing is one of the best strategies to prepare for the inevitable. When we manage our money well and invest consistently in the market, it could and probably make us rich one day to prepare for a comfortable retirement. However, another unspoken benefit is how it prepares us and our families for the unexpected death, whether in our old age or sooner than we expect. So let's learn to manage our money well. Let's invest. It's one of the best gifts we can give to ourselves and our families. Thank you guys for watching. In the line of life-changing books, Please check out a video where I review some of my favorite books here. Until next time, all the best.